There we go. Top the 10 myths Warcraft in Warcraft. Nearly 15 years old, and over I got the years, it. I got many it. legends have been created. Yep. Some are true, and some are half true, and others downright ridiculous. Yep. It's a tale as old as time, going back to the days of the Loch Ness Monster. Oh, that one's real. Bigfoot, I, know, I, I know him. You can save Eris in Final Fantasy VII. Yep. There's a nudity code for Tomb Raider. Yeah, and there is. Ermac in the first Mortal it's called Kombat 4chan. Game. All because the phrase Ermax, which truncates error macros, appears in the yep. diagnostics menu of the arcade copy of the game. As you'd imagine, the world of Warcraft has had its fair share of myths created throughout the years. Yep. Most of these I'll be covering will be from Classic. Not really intentional, oh, it's just Bingle that back Tiger. Then, with the game being new and everything, it was much easier to believe all of this stuff. Yeah. And also MMOs just being I believed a lot of stupid general, shit back then too. more likely to believe that there are these super hidden secrets to be discovered since the genre as a whole is on such a massive scale. Today, it's easy to say that, oh, that's stupid, who would believe that? Yeah, it is easy but to say that. before everything was gone over 4,000 times with the fine tooth comb, this mm -hmm. stuff was actually believable. Yeah. But, without any further delay, these are the top 10 myths of World of Warcraft. I used to swim out. Starting small and working our way up, um, number 10 on our list is that the Molten Core was made in one week. Wait, I actually thought that was true. Well, this is partly true. The environment Wait, yeah, was, was created in one week by the great John Stats. From the World of Warcraft diary, he describes his one week escapade in making the iconic cavern. Yeah, I thought that was true. Did you know that there was originally a path from Golamang's room to Magmadar? It was only taken out after Jeff Kaplan deemed that it would make the raid too circular, preferring instead a more linear layout. Wow. So the environment was created in one week. That could have been the little tunnel there. Into the raid Holy shit, I didn't know that. Something I'm guilty of spreading myself. So, so Jeff made the raid take longer. Errors. In the okay. following weeks, Jeff Kaplan did all of the spawning and creature placement. Scott Wait a Mercer second. Design. That means that every single fucking time that I have to deal with those respawning lava elementals and the fucking flame walkers every week... That's because of Jeff. Every week, Jeff fucks me in the ass. And all of the boss fights, Bob Fitch set up all of the loot, and Pat Nagel and Alex Afrasiabi handled the quests and attunement to the raid. Wow. All this doesn't make it any less impressive, though, yeah. and the raid as a whole deserves a spot in the Hall of Fame. Oh, taking into account the new ground that it broke, in spite of the tight window in time. which it was created. For number 9, we have Glaive Weapon Types Pre-Legion. As you know, ever since the Legion expansion and the release of the Demon Hunter class, the Glaive Type weapon is now obtainable in-game. And before that, in the Burning Crusade, we had the Warguard. Yeah, yeah, the Warguard. Well. That was it, though. But even prior to that, well, there was an artifact weapon in the game. For these fabled Glaive Weapons. Yeah. Why? It just wasn't, well, just wasn't usable it. by players. That's some ninja stuff right there. It just doesn't yeah, get all. any cooler than that. I'm gonna name my character some variation of Legolas or Sasuke and do wield these puppies. Like I said, it started yep. all the way back in the release of the game. Yep. There were a handful of NPCs who held these fabled weapons, typically night elves, such as mm -hmm. the Darnassus guards or this boss found in Dire This Mall, stupid Prince piece of Cliff shit Andrew. that dropped my leggings on the first I remember that pool. people would farm him over and over in hopes of that ultra rare glaive drop, but it was all for naught. <laughs> It didn't help that there were indeed glaive weapons in what the game. What a fucking house, idiot! Though. Who the fuck would Although do that? They were still of the sword type. The war glaives of Azanoth were dynamined. Do you know? I wonder. Like back in the day, I wonder if people thought Rivendare's Death Charger was one of these things, because it was just so ridiculously rare that there were probably servers that didn't even have it, and that might have actually happened. Like yeah, they, they didn't even yeah. What are the stats? Yeah, those are really really good stats, especially for uh, vanilla WoW. You know. And yeah, people might have actually thought and thought and is thought in a word. Thought and no, it's not. Okay, I didn't think so. Uh, anyway, so uh, they might have thought and that uh, it is now uh, that the Rivendell's Death Charger actually wasn't even a real mount. These it's crazy to think that too. At the time, and you could even combine them together to mm -hmm. form the Twin Blades of Asnath. It's a, equip, a portal you're icon. Consumed by the fury of Illidan, and she gained 1,400 attack power yeah. against demons, and 20% more hit chance, and 30% more haste. Mm -hmm. ah! uh, uh. There is also the Glaive of the Defender, a legendary quality item. 
More designed for tanking and having a proc that reduces damage by 75% what the for fuck? 10 seconds. As you'd imagine, these items became the 10 seconds. What the fuck? That's insanely good. Oh my god. It has armor, agility. Like, this is. If they add classic plus content, I want to see this fucking sword in the game, man. I want to use it. Like, increase, reduce damage taken by melee attacks, range attacks, and spells is 75%. That's a fucking proc shield wall? A proc shield wall? Holy shit, dude. That's so good. As you'd imagine, these items became the objective of a massive scavenger hunt. Players turned yeah, over every rock I'll bet. and even explored the dormant dark portal found in the Blasted Lands I did in that search too. of Illidan. You name it, people Walk have tried it, but it was never meant to be, as these items were indeed only found in the game files. Do you know which one I really hope that he adds? Oh, if you are... Uh, if you go through, uh, if you go stand in the thing right behind Golmag, you can see Ragnaros. You just have to go right up in there and look right in the cracks and you can see Ragnaros. And then, you know, you'd have people run up there and it ticks for like 3,000 damage every quarter second. So it just immediately fucking deletes you. And at number 8, we have rank 15 in Classic World of Warcraft. You can get rank 15. Every myth stems from a bit of truth, which is the case with this entry. You know what rank 15 As you may be? know, Classic World of Warcraft rank 15 had the old rank 14 gold. system. Huh. You started at rank 1, and depending on how many honor points you farmed, every week you would rank up yep. and gain access to powerful items, yep. consumables, yep. and even access to a special building True. and even the local defense channel. Absolutely. At ranks 12 through 13, you'd get your purple armor set, and at 14, the weapons, along with some nifty titles, High uh -huh. Warlord for the Horde, and Grand Marshal for the Alliance. However, there is believed to be one more rank, even higher, called City Protector. Oh, Alliance some should believe. get that, because they're always in the city! Yeah, we do have rank 15. It's, it's, it's automatically given out to every Alliance in the city. Go over to Ironforge! You see City Protectors everywhere! Yeah, what do you mean, Mad Season? That's not a myth. Just log on and find out. Then, if you grinded enough at rank 14, you'd eventually reach this, which ended up being false. Yeah. But like I said, most myths have a bit of truth to them. This rank was indeed planned to be in the game, and was even briefly in Blizzard's PvP guide on the official website. To obtain this, you'd have to be the number one player in honor farmed for the previous week. And of course maintain that for as long as you wanted to keep the rank. Wow. If you were successful, you would earn the prestigious titles listed here, and would even gain the ability to teleport to your race's major city. So Darnassus for Night Elf players, Undercity for Undead, That's fucking and so amazing. On. I guess that Wait, wait, I wanna look at the titles again. Protector of Stormwind, Overlord of Orgrimmar. Thane of Ironforge, High Sentinel of Darnassus, Death Lord of the Undercity, Chieftain of Thunderbluff, Avenger of Normagon. That sounds stupid, Avenger of Nomargon. Who the fuck would want that? A voodoo boss of Sinjin. A voodoo boss. Imagine if the voodoo boss was like a... Like a warrior or something. I don't know, that'd be, that'd be a little bit, a little bit disappointing. Dead, and so on. I guess that they figured that the system was a bit too hard Bob, for yeah, already, you'd be Bob though, Salami. So they limited exactly. it to rank 14 instead. And the City Protector rank was lost to the Aether. Yep. It was pretty troublesome though, because people still believed it existed, and with the way that the honor system worked back then, to rank up, you'd have to get more honor than other players of your faction. So you'd have these rank 14s oh. still grinding honor like crazy for the non-existent oh rank 15, God. which made it harder for other- There was a player named Kurama on the Daggerspine server who held rank 14 for, ever, for over 6 months, in the hopes of getting rank 15. Yeah, he's not alive anymore. It's not that he died, he just became one with the game. He 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 didn't he didn't die, he just deceived he he received and elevated himself to a higher level of consciousness. I really hope they give that guy an NPC. Yeah, he became the game. He is the game. Rank 14. Imagine after six months. Imagine like the fourth 
like the the tenth week of that, like th three months in. And every Tuesday you wake up and you're like, "Am I still GM?" Yeah, I am. And then you check to see if you're fucking if you're city defender and you're not. Like, imagine. Like, I want to. I wonder what the last week was like for him. I, I would love to interview this person. This is fucking hilarious. He still plays. I found his armory. Wait, what? What the fuck? Really? Oh my god. Holy shit. 536,000 kills? Do you know what the funny thing about that is? He probably got all those in vanilla... <laughs> He probably got all of those in fucking vanilla, man. And he's actually still playing the game. Dude, I, I need to ask this guy what his slash plate is. Man, I bet he's gonna make me look like a fucking noob. That That is insane. Yeah, he's alive. And his honorable kills leaderboard? Yeah, it's insane, dude. Power and K, lol, I had one million. Yeah, I don't know about that, dude. Three players to rank up, and there's a lot of drama going around because it was such a hardcore grind. Yeah. Recording players to play around the clock, pretty much. It was quite common to account share even, but that's getting off topic. So rank no, 15 it's not. at number 8. At number 7, we have artifact items in vanilla. Similar to the glaive section, these finally saw yep. a release in Legion, but until then, there were hints of these items in the game. Yep. In their original items that was page like the on their official website, it was listed with the other tiers of loot, and that's poor, common, uncommon, rare, epic, legendary, and artifact. As you can see, the color was undecided, and then later changed to red, and eventually yep. this peach color. And with all of the data mined items, just like those glaives, people would I've seen a lot all of these. These are pretty fucking for cool. clues on how to obtain them. It didn't matter that in July of 2005, Blizzard updated their page to say they're not yet implemented. That didn't stop players from scouring every corner of the world, even in ghost form. Yeah, I've done the same stupid shit, dude. I think that, I mean, like, what would it be like if they added, like, a new... I, I wish they added a new level of difficulty for uh, pieces of, like, gear. And they make the gear, like, the, the, the armor or, like, the weapon or whatever, they make it red. And the quest line would make the Scepter of the Shifting Sands look like a joke. Like, it would take, like, literally two hours, or sorry, not two hours, two years to even get through the quest line. Yeah, Primal Ancient, basically, yeah. It would be fucking ridiculous. Oh, I've seen some people with a lot of HKs. I, I've, I've seen that. Uh, Nixie, I know exactly who that guy is. Retail's up? Okay. Other artifact quality items would be Alex's Ring of Audacity, which increases your defense by a thousand, and you can consider yourself born again hardcore. Probably a reference to Alex Afrasiabi, who was a quest designer for the game back then. Yep. You also had Martin Thunder, which was a one-handed mace with some resistances, and an on-use effect that kills all enemies within 30 yards of you. I need that and for PvP. And also its cousin, Martin Fury, which miraculously did manage to find its way into a place. Yeah, it was inventory. the old war thing. I've told this story before, so yeah. I won't be super detailed here, but to sum it up, on accident, a GM sent this to a player named Karate Chop on the Vecnalesh server, who then used it to clear through all of the Wrath of the Lich King raids during the Eldwar tier. Yep. He was quickly caught, the item was removed, and he was immediately that banned from the banned. game. As for the rest of his skills, so even those not in the raid, those who were online were suspended temporarily in a frantic effort of damage control. Yep. Yeah, screw that dude questing in Elwyn. Damn cheater. So Fuck maybe him, not dude. technically a myth, since it was obtained for through an mistake. extraordinary series of events. I would have banned a guy using it But still, it a pretty big myth in the game overall. And at number six, we have Karazhan is enterable. This is a pretty big claim, but the myth itself never got too much. Oh, it is. So the crypts are honorable, right? Too high on the list. But okay. Of course, this would be another vanilla myth, as Karazhan mm -hmm. was released in the Burning Crusade expansion. Yeah. But it was believed by many to be enterable, or at least interacted with in some way. I mean, it even has an instance portal. And taking a look mm -hmm. at the nearby Karazhan crypts, there has to be more than meets the eye with this place. Yeah, I would say Referencing so. Referencing the computer games article from March of 2005. 
Issue 172, it even gives a preview of Karazhan as an upcoming raid. So naturally, players thought that it would be a thing in Classic, or that she yeah, could somehow Yeah, it's too bad they never did it. that. That would've been awesome. Those who managed to glitch through the gate, however, found that the portal was just up. for show. And as for the article, there were plans for Karazhan to be released in Classic, but due to one reason or another, it was pushed back to the Burning Crusade. And coming in at number 5, we have an oldie, but a goodie. Back then, there were many theories on how loot drops were determined yep. in the game. Why I used did to this think boss this drop this loot. The idea is that it has to be seeded from different variables, and there are many theories on just how it was influenced. Yeah, I used to think this same stupid being shit that the raid all the time. Or even the first person to zone into a raid had an influence on the loot tables. Like, we had good luck with drops with player X as the raid leader, and bad luck with Y, so we should always have X as the leader, or he should zone in first to the raid, so we get- I, uh, I rationalized this one time, a long time ago, I think it was like in BC. I said that because my character usually has like legendary drops enabled, that I needed to be the leader of the raids, and that worked really well because that also allowed me to give myself Master Looter. And, um... This was like actually like this was so long ago. I don't remember exactly like how the logic worked or whatever, but I just wanted to be leader. I didn't even think I master glued did anything. I just wanted to kick people out that I thought sucked. Like that's really what it was. I don't even think I master glued or ninja or anything. I just like I wanted to kick people out who I thought were bad at the game. The good drops. And guilds were quite strict with it. My guild in particular <laughs> would remake the entire raid if someone was foolish enough to zone in before the designated person, which was a pain since the raid's a 40 man and he had to have everyone zone out. That's that so no fucking AFK, stupid, dude. And manually reinvite the right people again and then rebuff. Yeah. It took forever, but I guess it was something that they felt strongly enough to waste 20 minutes of valuable raiding time. Yeah, that's about right. It was, of course, never revealed just what influences the loot in the game and what doesn't. And it's something that's died Ooh, ever since the advent Titan of personal Forge. loot, thankfully. Wow. And next, we have the Bengal Tiger. Up until the Cataclysm expansion, yep. there was rumored to be a hidden tiger mount in the game. It exists in the game yep. files, and hey, look, there are even screenshots of it this time. Players Yo, it's once pretty more badass. scoured the earth in search of this mount, this time focusing their efforts in the Stranglethorn Vale zone. It's which right holds there on a the selection corner. Of Bengal tigers, the cave is there, a but that's it. Connection. Eventually, through some tricky out of bounds jumping, a lone cave was found in these mountains. This was so was never designed for players to be able to reach. Yeah, there it but is. There's quite a lot of detail put into it. You have this nicely That's the lit Bengal path tiger with a bunch vendor. of torches and crates scattered about. Yep. And this cave, which holds these tarps. So they actually did give this the Bengal tiger to somebody. Uh, there is a, a genuine Bengal tiger in the game. So uh, there was a girl uh, that apparently got it from the Make a Wish Foundation. And uh, they gave her the Bengal tiger. So there you go, guys. Uh, if you want the tiger, you know, there you go. That, that's how it's done. Uh, he's going to get to do that? Yeah, exactly. Why, these tarps must be made of Bengal tiger hide, players said. And thus the oh Bengal tiger God, cave dude. was born. It was rumored that under certain conditions... A <gasps> oh my God, dude. Cave and sell you yeah, the just have terminal mount. cancer, that's all. It only spawns at certain times, maybe once a year. Oh, maybe you need to have this cape equipped to see the NPC. Ooh, Tiger Strike, or maybe you need that's to be smart. A hunter and have a tiger tamed as a pet. Yep. Hmm. Maybe, just maybe, it was a mount that was planned, but was just eventually scrapped, and the screenshots going around were from the beta of the game and never made it to release. That must have been it. I mean, like, there could have been like a private server or something like case, that. And no matter what players did, the Bengal Tiger Cave yielded no Bengal Tiger. Yep. Getting into the final three here, though. My mom thought up, this. we have the Emerald Dream. Yeah, my mom actually thought this. This does, of course, exist in the lore. As described by the Wapedia, it's a vast, ever-changing spirit world. She thought it was in Feral West. the boundaries of the physical world. <laughs> yeah. And it represents how Azeroth would be if intelligent beings had not altered its surface. Basically, a utopia of sorts. Yeah. It was referenced in various ways, even in Classic. You oh, talk Scepter with Nocturne and Stormrage's Sands spirit from the Ooh. dream during the Scepter of the Shifting Ooh. Sands questline. Okay. But it was always believed that it actually existed within the game somewhere, and that she could somehow It actually it. did! Well, it turns out that yeah. it does exist, but like with many others in the list, it's only in the game files. Exactly. It was being worked on throughout that the That is the Emerald Dream the game, right there. And it was believed to be a high-level zone for players to adventure in, and the Druid class in particular would have a close link to it. 
In 2003, Jeff Kaplan, the lead game designer, said that it was in the works and that it was shaping up to be extremely cool. The zone was meant to be endgame, it was very large, and it's was too bad be this never happened, challenging. Man. This it was really all is. said before release in 2003, so when the game launched, players eventually asked the question, well, where is it? In classic fashion, Blizzard maintained radio silence, which prompted many rumors and even hoaxes on how to enter the Emerald Dream. Yeah. False directions being posted. Yep. Oh yeah, just keep going. Slum out into the water. ocean, that's all. It's somewhere over there, just keep going. Yep, just keep going. Videos of people exploring the zone were posted, some of which providing no context. One of the most popular exploration videos back then was by Dopefish, who showed himself exploring various places, the Emerald Dream included. What the It was fuck? disclosed that it was all done on a private server, I believe. Yep. But it didn't stop people from trying to figure out ways to reach it. In this scene, Wait, is he gonna you RP walk in there and then fucking cut Drake it into the Emerald Dream? The portal, and with some simple video editing, he's in. These oh green my portals God. behind all of the Dragons of Nightmare World bosses were always believed That's to be so somehow, funny, dude. which may have been the intent at some point. And you know there's like all these alas, kids back then. No it's like, you know, like kids back then, they, didn't, they weren't used to being lied to on the internet. You know, they weren't used to just like being just reflexively skeptical. And so some kid would probably see that and get himself killed eight times trying to walk through one of the fucking world bosses to get into this portal, only to finally get there and walk right through and turn around and then fucking, what's his name, uh, Iramis or whatever the fuck his name is, is gonna just attack him through the goddamn, uh, the portal, right? Uh, it, it's pretty funny to think about that. On the internet, nobody knows you're a lying gnome. Exactly, dude. Uh, Aramis, what, what are the, what are their names? Terry R, I think there's one of them, yeah. Um, Emerus, yeah, oh, it's Emerus, yeah, the only reason I know it's Emerus is fucking Athene, okay? Well, is Athene, is that, is Emerus even one of them? Fuck, dude, I don't even remember. It's on the real servers. Yeah, it's been so long. It was only on September 2006, after the announcement of the Burning Crusade expansion, yeah. that Blizzard broke their silence on the matter and confirmed that it's not in the game. And also that yep. there are no plans for it as of yet. Between then and now, players have flirted with the Emerald we do have Dream the Emerald through various quests, and even visiting the corrupted Emerald Nightmare Raid in the Legion expansion. Yep. But to this day, we've yet to see a full representation of the Fabled Zone. And in similar fashion, another one from Classic here is that you could enter the Outland. The funny thing about these is... This is the Orc homeworld of Draenor. Now, the only... The, the best part about this is that the best myths are grounded in reality. And there are actually places that you can go to and see Outland in Vanilla WoW. And if you can mix the myth of the game with like kind of the reality, I, I think that that's really where, where it comes. Because it, you can get people to believe it halfway. And if you can prove half of it, people will just want to believe the other half. Corrupted by the Burning Legion, and it served as the stage for Catguard's campaign in Warcraft 2. What the 2. fuck? This myth, of course, ended with the Burning Crusade expansion. The fucking cinematic, dude. I don't remember that one. But it was believed that you could somehow enter the Twisted Realm far before that. Yeah. I mean, the Dark Portal was in the game, so it was inevitable that players searched for ways to enter it, or at least come up with outlandish theories or rumors to find yeah. the hidden zone. As I said, most myths are based off of some truth. Bro, I thought that shit and was it's real the case back again then. With this one, what do you mean? There were plans for players to enter the Outland in vanilla World of Warcraft. I mean, why have the Dark Portal on the login screen, right? But due to one reason or another, yep. it was scrapped and saved for later. Either they ran out of time, or they just didn't expect just how successful the game was going to be. I don't think any. Like, and once they said that, maybe they said, "Let's just save it for another expansion." However, just true. like the Emerald Dream, this there is existed it, dude. a version of the Outland. In this the is the files. original Outland right here. Of course, here. not actually accessible by the players. Yeah. This would later become the Hellfire Peninsula. Yep. And as you can see, this would be on our hold where Cadgar and company took residence. And the zone Pools as a whole Agronaut. has a lot of similarities to the final version that we received. Mm -hmm. It had a huge amount of work put into it, considering that it never saw the light of day. It's disappointing that all these new zones... Dope Fish's exploration if... video. If they did Classic Plus, would you guys want to see them take these old, uh, these old zones that were kind of like ideas and take what the old files were and then just iterate on them and recreate them into an actual game? Like, I would love to see them do that and like the Dragon Isles and like Karazhan Crypts, etc. man. That'd be fucking cool, dude. 
Like, I, I would love to see it. The original iteration of the Mount Hydro raid. Yeah, yeah, dude. A uh, poll? I don't know if that'd be a poll, but, like, I would love to see them take, like, the original stuff that people used to see in, like, these videos and take that exact content and then build that into something even bigger and release it for Classic Plus. I, I feel like that would just be, like, fucking nostalgia overload for people. It would be, like, the best combination of, like, nostalgia with, like, also... It's like finding out that a, that a unicorn is real. I think that's what it would be like. It would be like finding finding out that a unicorn is real. And players ood and odd at the unseen lands. Nostalgia there must plus, be a way exactly. in there. Maybe if I try to go through the portal on a level 47 naked gnome with nothing but a banana in my inventory. Hmm. Yeah, back to the drawing board. There was also another version hidden away in the Dead Mines instance. Yep, this one right here. Which still exists to this day, actually. Wait, if you what? glitch through the wall with slow fall, you can reach another work in progress of what's referred to as the old outland. Wait, what? And another red herring. Was you can do it in the game in now. The zone. In the depths, you could find a dark portal. Wait, don't we already no have way. that in the blasted lands? Well, how do you explain this screenshot then? What you're looking at is an yeah. underwater dark portal found in the waters. Do it? You guys want me to do it? It was removed in the alpha version of World of Warcraft. I'll do it if you want. That didn't stop players from exploring the waters and searching for some remnants of the portal. Okay. The answer was simple, though. Back in the alpha of the game, every instance had the dark portal as a placeholder do for it. the entrance. Do and it. at some point, it do seems it. like there were some plans do for it. an underwater I'll do it after this. sorts located in the zone. But for some reason, probably time, yeah, I'll do it, it after ended this. up being scrapped. The screenshot remained, though, and the zone would become one of many focal points of player's search of the Outland. Well, was, they, they just basically reused the asset of the Dark Portal somewhere else, and they decided not to do that to make the Dark Portal more unique. It's not really th that amazing. But as much as we look back and number one is going to be the Ashbringer that players did to enter these zones, I already know it. This one was understandable because it was actually referenced number and one is the Ashbringer game through the corrupted Ashbringer event. Which leads me to number one on our list, and that's the thought that you could obtain the legendary Purified Ashbringer in classic World of Warcraft. Come on, how could this not be number one? Yep. The Ashbringer was I the weapon it. of the former High Lord of the Silver Hand, I knew it, Alexandros Mulgrain. Yep. And when he fell at the hands of his son, he, along with his weapon, became corrupted and were made to serve Kel'Thuzad in death. He was one of the Four Horsemen, which was a boss fight in the next Ramus 40 Man raid in Vanilla. And on the drop table, players could loot the corrupted Ashbringer to wield for themselves. Man, the sword dude. came with a variety I'm gonna of special get that. effects, including creepy whispers yep. from the last I, I, sword. I'll be the first Morgan person himself. to get that. Dude, that's gonna be great. I was called Ashbringer. Yeah, it has like whispers and all kinds of other crazy shit, dude. If you had it dude. equipped, the Argent Dawn faction would become hostile to you, so yep. you had to put it away whenever you entered their hub. And on the flip side, if you enter the Cathedral Wing of the Scarlet Monastery they all dungeon, friendly. you trigger a special event I forgot the, the Spirit Dawn would be hostile. takes revenge on his son. Yep. Going into a hidden chamber on the side and talking to the undead Inquisitor Fairbanks, yep. he provides some information on the Cursed Sword, and he ultimately tells players to find his other son, a more devout and pious man you may never meet. It is rumored that he is able to build the Ashbringer anew without recording the old I tainted fucking... blade, and that he... Re I fucking thought it was going to happen in BC, dude. I remember trying to think, man, I've got to get the fucking Ashbringer in vanilla so I can get the actual Ashbringer in, in BC, but it never happened. ...resides in the Outland. This set off the biggest scavenger hunt in the game's history. Yep. Like I said, players tried every way possible to zone through the dormant portal I feel in the Blasted Lands, the location yep. of the removed portal in Ashara. There is a joke book that dropped from the Altrick Valley Battleground called Matt Pagel's and that's Guide how to get Extreme a, the Angling, legendary sword with all but the right? last page missing. It reads, and so yep. that's where you'll find the legendary sword of the Scarlet High Lord, Ashbringer. Ain't it amazing what you run into in an ordinary day Well, of people ran with that. Which prompted players to then fish for it in the waters right the underneath the dungeon, bridge. Where Alexandros met his end. Yep. There were NPCs who referenced it, and even a data mined legendary version of the blade itself. Oh my so god. So it was no wonder that players oh were scouring every corner god. of the world. We were After so dumb. After thousands and dude. thousands of posts, we it were was so dumb. To not exist in the game in early 2006, where the community manager, Ionix, stated that they'll only add it after casters received their legendary. Mm -hmm. So once Nexramus came out and they got Antiesh, and now with that corrupted Ashbringer, 
players thought that it was in game and it was just super hidden. Yep. Of course, when the Burning Crusade yep. launched, everyone scrambled to find the last son of Alexander Smolgrain. But even still, after going over every zone See, with a fine tooth comb, he was nowhere to be found. That's such a disappointment, man. Dude, it would have been so badass if they had done that. Like, imagine an item that you fucking improve over expansions. I, I, I couldn't even imagine, like, Blizzard doing something, like, that big. That'd be fucking insane, dude. Uh, rollback, yeah, it was better that it was never added. I don't know. Well, it was added, actually. But, uh, just in general, I don't know. I think that'd be really fucking cool. And uh, EverQuest did that. Heirlooms? No, not like Heirlooms, okay? Like something that's really hard to get. Like, they can't do that in current WoW because the whole progression system's broken. So there's no way you can be like, oh, well, then you want to have, like, all this. It just, it would not work in current WoW, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, there it is. NBC and Terracar Forest was the blacksmith. Wait, what's this here? NBC and Terracar Forest was the blacksmith of honor hold who was mega teased to be the son of Alexander Smogrin named David Wayne. Oh yeah, he's for a uh, uh, the blacksmithing quest. See, I thought that the guy who was going to purify Ashbringer was uh, what's his name? Son, Turalian's son, the guy in honor hold. But obviously, that never fucking happened. And it was only in the Wrath of the Lich King expansion when Tyrion Fordring got the yeah. Ashbringer in lore. Did most players give up on their quest? Yep. Ultimately, as you know, we did eventually see the Ashbringer now everybody's released as an artifact Ashbringer. weapon in the Legion expansion. Yeah, everybody gets a bit the anticlimactic, however, as every single paladin got it. Hey, wasn't this supposed to be a fabled, ultra-powerful, mythical weapon? That's why everybody gets hmm. it. Well, maybe there's a sale going on or something. Everybody's ultra-powerful. But still, during the time, it goes down as one of the biggest myths in yep. the game's history, with Blizzard themselves even referencing it. You can unlock the alternate corrupted appearance of the blade, and the whole process referenced all of the ridiculous things that yep. players did in their hunt for the Ashbringer. McConnell is one of the people that figured this book, out. Killing these slimes in Back the Eastern in the Plaguelands, talking to random NPCs, and yes, even fishing in the waters outside of Stratholm. Mm -hmm. So I guess everything came full circle after all. Yep. But that's about it. This concludes the top 10 myths of World of Warcraft. Some understandable. And some downright ridiculous. Whatever I would the say case so. was. I hope that you found the video entertaining. Like it if you liked it. And this was pretty funny. One. Yeah, I, I. Peace. I feel like there's like so much history about like wow, that's like like if you played the game for that long, you just remember like Farewell vaguely like all these dumbass things in the game. We hope you enjoy. And uh, it's great, video. dude.